Hey, welcome back to the studio. Today we're going to be working again on the block of the month challenge between the alley cat and the dog park. Um, I think we'll probably start with the alley cat first this time. This is another one of the elongated blocks, so this would have been one in particular if you had a directional fabric. You would have wanted to cut a little bit differently than what the uh, instructions were in the kit because the kit assumed uh, non-directional fabric when doing your cutting. So in the case of the Ally Cat, where it's just squiggly lines, that one was perfectly fine. But with my newsprint for the dog park, I went ahead and fussy cut that so that those would be running uh, the same way so the newsprint wouldn't be going sideways. If that didn't bother you, then that's totally fine. Uh, it was just something I didn't want to do. Uh, just a refresher, the uh, block of the month kits came in these really nice packages. You had the uh, cardboard box with the cover, color plate. You had all of the patterns uh, full size and those you could use to reproduce the pattern again if you wanted to make another copy you know, by uh, fusing your own fabric or cutting with scissors, a uh, traditional needle turn. Uh, it had all of the fabric for the applique itself. They're all pre-cut and they're pre-fused with Steam Seam 2. So with the instructions, the uh, cutting instructions, the placement guide, all of that was included. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my light box and pull you in a little bit closer and we'll get started with Alley Cat and I think this is block number nine. We have one more to go before uh, we start getting to the completion of this project. I start the way I always start. I have ironed my paper pattern just to make sure I don't have any creases in it because any creases might cause a little bit of distortion in the placement of the applique shapes. Then I also lay out all of my components, one to make sure everything is here, but also just so I don't get confused as I am working on a piece. Uh, some of the shapes are very similar, uh, mirror imaged of each other and it would be easy to uh, pop them down in the wrong place. The other thing I like to have, I have my instructions here, which I don't need at this point, on how to use the uh, laser cut applique, but I also have my color cover, which really helps in making sure I get the placement of specific items in, in the right place. So I have my paper pattern, my background fabric lined up, and I'm going to go ahead and start laying some pieces down. And let's see, I think the tail, which is a funny little tail, is one of the first things I'll put down because it does go underneath the body. With the laser cut applique, all I have to do is sort of just curl over that paper in the back to get a little grip on it. Sometimes my little fat fingers take a minute to get going and I try and get that very first piece going where it's supposed to generally if I can get that down right then the, these curly pieces will go the way they're supposed to and if that is not 100% in the right place I'm not going to stress myself too much over it The body goes next because it went, um, the feet will go over top of that. So I can go ahead and put the little cat paws down next and then I'll work on the head because these should be fairly easy. We can only see one of his back paws, but we can see both of his uh, front paws and that just makes me think I did have since two paws were close together we used two different fabrics there and the way I had it placed they would have both been the same but this is the nice thing about the fusible applique that we use it's steam seam 2 and it's completely repositionable so that's really cool um, if you have a little mistake in placing something, you can just pick it back up. But if I had to move this block, I could move it without the pieces coming off of it. 
And that's why we love the steam assume too. Now, if you have a trouble <clears throat> seeing through uh, your pattern, sometimes you can do these items in components. Like you can put the inner ear on the outer ear right on the pattern so you can see that better. And then use that compound piece to place on your pattern if your light box isn't strong enough or if you don't have a light box. Sometimes also I will just lift up the pattern and gauge where a component goes and you can get away with that a lot too. It's dark with that black fabric but I can actually see through it. Rather than completing the face, I'm going to jump over to my little bird. Some of these pieces are small. And with my big hands, sometimes it's hard to get a hold of a little piece, but I'm not sure if a pair of tweezers would help because <clears throat> tweezers are hard for me to hold on to also. The square part of the leg always goes up under the body. The rounded part is the foot. That's the part that we will see and we make these little leg sticks for multiple kits and sometimes um, they're longer than they need to be so uh, sometimes they'll tuck further inside the body um, I need to iron this piece again because the fusible web wasn't stuck completely to the fabric so I'll go ahead and do that and let that piece cool down And while that's cooling, I'm going to get my tail feathers on. There are a couple items in this kit, not this particular month, but in this process where I've waited to attach the uh, something that overlaps multiple blocks and I still have those put aside in, um, in my kit box. Until I need them. Out of all the shapes that we have, the little eyes are usually the hardest for me to handle. I believe that we use a ultra suede to make those. And they're very small and it's hard to get a hold of that little tiny round dot of paper on the back. Now my steam and steam is cooled enough that I can handle that piece and get that leg on. I didn't want it to be like a one-legged flamingo. Now the bird is done, we can go ahead with the head, the muzzle, the mouth, the eyes.
And again, I don't know if this is just our climate here, but I don't usually have a problem getting the steam of seam paper off the back. Usually peels off pretty nicely for me. We're down to the whiskers and the freckles. I'm going to have to talk to Patricia because I haven't decided once we get this put together what quilting pattern we might use. It's a beautiful day here today. It's nice and cool, but I've already been notified that we have heat coming in. It's supposed to be 100 degrees tonight or later this, uh, tomorrow maybe. I'm not a huge fan of the real high temperatures. I would rather have snow. Everyone in my family thinks I'm crazy, but I would think that would be self-evident. I always wonder if somebody younger with smaller hands would be better at peeling these papers off. But I don't have anyone matching that description here. You can see uh, if you do have an issue with the fusible web not sticking to the back of the fabric, it's a very easy uh, thing to correct. You just hit it with the iron and uh, refuse it, and then you can go ahead and just let it cool enough so you can handle it, and then you'll find that the fusible web will stick really well. I have never been to the factory, so I have never seen their manufacturing process. I can't imagine getting that steam seam on those big pieces of fabric and then getting it all lined up.
We're down to the last two little freckles. If nothing else, the dog park wins for me because it doesn't have freckles. This is my light box. I don't want to iron on it, but I do like to get those hit just for a second. This is all the pieces for the alley cat. So I can go ahead and set this aside until I'm ready to do the fusing and I'll do both the dog park and the alley cat together. Um, but now I'm going to set up the table for dog park and, and you're going to see just how much quicker it goes. <clears throat> Again, I have my paper pattern ironed. I have my background fabric laying on top of it as uh, illustrated on the uh, outside lines. My color cover guide is here so I can see if I have any questions about a particular fabric. And I have everything laid out just about where it goes. I will say that the body of this piece was so large that it was folded in half lightly to get into the package. So what I did when I pulled it out of the package was just give it a quick press to make sure that when I placed it there wasn't any uh, little accordion pleat or fold in that. I want to make sure that it gets onto the background fabric as it should be without a wrinkle. Now I know some dogs have wrinkles but this isn't one of them. This one, I believe, is one you'd put ketchup and mustard with. Isn't that what they do with wiener dogs? Or maybe get them a vest, the color of ketchup and mustard. After we've done the cats, the, because the dog is always a similar placement, it's easy to get the pieces going pretty quick. I like these big floppy ears. I always keep a little clover head flower pen here on my ironing station. Um, I'm not having any problem today, but if you ever have a problem, you can score the back of the paper backing with a needle or with a seam ripper. And then when you fold it, it gives you something to be able to grab hold of. And uh, some people find that useful when you're doing the uh, removing the paper. It's also kind of nice sometimes when you're dealing with the round shape just to make sure you don't fray any of the edges. But I've always felt that because the uh, pieces are cut with a laser that the laser almost sears those edges and gives you a really nice clean crisp applique shape that I just don't think you could get the same with a pair of scissors. I think this one's going much quicker.
we want his nose to go right to the very peak of his muzzle. And I always like these little uh, paper labels packed by Vicky. I can't even imagine cutting these that small, having to grab one of those. But uh, Vicky does a really good job of all the packaging because I only once thought I was missing a piece, but it was on the black part of my light box. And I didn't find it until after I was finished. So I've been really lucky so far with having all of my components inside. And you can imagine what it would be like to package these kits piece by piece. There's a lot of labor that goes into this, a lot of love. We also uh, package these with smiles included so that when you open the package, the smiles just come right out into your studio. Sometimes my thumb will get in between in between the paper and the well the fusible and the fabric. If anybody has any uh, suggestions for uh, quilting design for either the dog park or the alley cat, I would certainly be interested in hearing that, what your opinion is. Down to the last few pieces. Now just down to my little eyes my nemesis. It's nice to get something finished today. I spent all day yesterday cleaning the studio. I do most of my sewing upstairs for myself. I only come down here for taping and to use the long arm. And I'm just surprised at how messy this room gets. Nobody else comes in here.
And there you have it. We have all of the pieces in place for block number nine on Dog Park and Alley Cat. I'm going to go ahead and move the light box out of the way and I'll get to fusing both of these two items and I'm going to do them both at the same time side by side. I have my two completed blocks. All of the items that are on the background here are just uh, laying in place. They're still repositionable all the way up into the point that I actually fuse these down. So you can see I can still lift up all of these edges. But I can lift this up this way also and they don't come loose because they have that tackiness from the steam seam 2. These black ultra suede pieces are uh, the only likely characters that might shift because of the weight of them. Um, they may be uh, heavier than the ability of the tackiness of the steam seam 2 to hold in place. So those I always like to check just before I get ready to fuse to make sure they're in the correct place. And steam seam 2 does require a component of steam to help activate the adhesive during the fusing process. So rather than putting uh, moisture or water in my iron, uh, which will inevitably lead to a leaky iron, I don't care whose it is, I just use a spray bottle. And I like to use a Teflon pressing sheet to lay over top of the applique. I suppose in some rare cases it might protect the iron from the adhesive coming out and getting on the iron, but that's not really been my issue. My issue is I tend to be a little lazy and I push the iron from side to side. And if you do that while you're working with a fusible applique, sometimes you will scrunch up the edge of one of the applique shapes and then while the iron's on top of it, you're fusing it in place. So you are in fact fusing a scrunched up shape, which will distort or uh, damage the overall look or aesthetic of the applique piece. So I find if I use the pressing sheet, it protects the pieces, keeps them laying flat, even if I for, don't, you know, I forget to lift up on the iron. And you need to add up, you know, a few seconds for the heat to uh, go through the te Teflon pressing sheet. So I do add that on. And I don't usually sit here while the camera's running and fuse this in real time. I usually do it a little bit longer than um, after I shut the camera off because it's just kind of boring to watch. But I'm not afraid to just set the iron down and, you know, count to 10 or 12 um, and then move on to the next piece. <clears throat> also, you know, having spritzed it, I know if it's dry to the touch after I lift it up, if the iron has heated the fabric enough to dry the moisture, then it's probably also gotten the uh, fusible activated. I will then flip the two blocks over and re-spritz it and then fuse it again from the back. The reason we do that is because some of these pieces are compound layers, like the eyeball on the eye, on top of the head, on top of the background. It takes a while for the heat to penetrate through all those pieces. Also on that ultra suede, because it's thicker. It takes a little bit longer for that heat to penetrate all the way through. So I know if I iron it from the front and from the back, I'm making absolutely sure that the uh, fusible has had a time to completely activate. You cannot overfuse the steam seam too. It's most likely, if anything, that you would underfuse it. If you're getting gumming on your needle because you're top stitching or quilting, that's an indicator that you haven't fused long enough and there's excess adhesive still available uh, floating around in there. So if you uh, are quilting and you're getting a clean needle, you know that you've fused pretty good. And as I said, I really like to get those places where the ultra suede is at because the heat 
uh, it does take a little while to get through the uh, the heat of that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this ironing process and then I'll flip these out and show you what the finished blocks look like. Well that's it for this month. We have both the Alley Cat and the Dog Park blocks finished. If you join us next month you're going to see the last of the uh, components for this block of the month. It's block number 10 which is the end of that and then we'll follow that up with a video on piecing the uh, quilts together and then hopefully getting them quilted as well. Um, I'm <laughs> a few steps closer to getting my IntelliQuilter quilted or set up so hopefully uh, by the time we get to that point the IntelliQuilter will be here to help me uh, quilt these uh, so I'm looking forward to that. It's kind of a new experience and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. So until then, I'll see you next time and thanks for stopping in.